Let's move on to infection. That's COVID-19 control. Under this, the first one, cluster containment through quarantine and isolation. Quarantine, as we know, refers to separation of contacts who are not yet ill, but have been exposed to COVID-19 and therefore can become ill. Contacts are those involved in any of the following. Had face-to-face -face contact with a patient who has COVID-19 within one meter and for more than 15 minutes. Provided care to patients with COVID-19 without using PPE. Stayed in the same close environment, meaning worked with the patient or lived in the same house as the patient with COVID-19. Or traveled in close proximity, that is within one meter, with a COVID-19 patient. The contact should have occurred from two days before and up to 14 days after the onset of symptoms in the patient. Now some instructions for the individual who is being home quarantined. Stay in a separate room at home, if possible, with an attached toilet. Maintain a distance of at least one meter from others, including between beds if there are no single rooms. Perform hand washing frequently. Wear a mask always and we need to instruct the person on how to wear the mask properly. Keep the individual's belongings or whatever is used by the individual separate and wash them separately. Surfaces like floor, tabletops, other high touch surfaces should be cleaned at least once a day with detergent and water. And it's best to assign one caregiver for the individual okay so masks are ideally meant to be single use but there is shortage and we know it here is a very useful link by the government where there are videos on reusable face covers including how you can make them at home some instructions for the caregiver maintain a distance of one meter when entering the room use a mask Plan your tasks in such a way that you can finish several of them at a time so that you can minimize the number of times that you enter the room. Wash your hands after you come out of the room. A note, daily follow-up of individuals who are quarantined is important and should include screening for body temperature and respiratory symptoms. Also, those with other chronic medical conditions should be monitored for additional problems. Any person in quarantine who develops fever or respiratory symptoms should be managed as a suspected case of COVID-19, that is, by isolating. Respiratory samples from quarantined persons, regardless of whether or not they have symptoms, should be sent for laboratory testing at the end of the quarantine period. Okay, so, so that's about quarantine. Now, let's move on with isolation which refers to separating individuals who are actually ill and are suspected or confirmed to have COVID-19. Separation should happen until they test negative. In the isolation facility, the following should be ensured. Good ventilation and airflow with one meter distance between beds. Care of suspected and positive patients in separate wards. Intensive care beds with critical care facilities should complications develop. Separate equipment for each patient. Or disinfect if you're going to use it for other patients. Hand washing facilities, waste disposal facilities. Use of personal protective equipment, including by visitors before entering the facility. But it would be better to limit visitors in the first place. Okay, so we are talking about infection control and under that we went through the first measure that is cluster containment through quarantine and isolation. Now let's move on to the next one that is principles of infection control in the hospital setting. 
first one through triage that is by screening early recognition of contact suspected or confirmed individuals source control through immediate isolation and signs should be posted reminding people to alert healthcare workers should they develop symptoms next one standard precautions as we know they apply to all patients these include hand hygiene respiratory hygiene ensure that all patients cover their nose and mouth with a tissue when coughing or sneezing offer a medical mask to patients with suspected covid-19 disease when they are waiting perform hand hygiene after contact with respiratory secretions the next under standard precautions use of ppe safe waste management environmental cleaning disinfection and sterilization of patient care equipment the next principle of infection control that is implementing additional precautions and that is contact and droplet precautions which apply to healthcare workers patients and their families we have gone through this already when we talked about what is required in an isolation facility continuing with contact precautions minimize transporting patients to other units but if it becomes necessary perform hand hygiene use ppe notify the area receiving the patient well in advance so that they can take precautions as well limit the number of visitors to the area or with the technology these days you can encourage communication through phone or video call maintain a record of all individuals entering the patient's area including staff and visitors next under additional precautions airborne precautions for aerosol generating procedures like intubation extubation bronchoscopy cpr these procedures are performed in an adequately ventilated room and the number of individuals present in the room should be limited ppe should be worn when performing these procedures with a particulate respirator such as an n95 mask moving on with the principles of infection control administrative controls and policies environmental and engineering controls to limit transmission of infection such as training healthcare workers ensuring an adequate nurse patient ratio public education monitoring compliance with standard precautions and so forth nursing professionals as part of various administrative committees can play a significant role in formulating and implementing these policies how long should these precautions be adhered to standard precautions as we know should be followed always and for all patients and not just in the context of covid-19 contact and droplet precautions should particularly be followed until the patient is asymptomatic some points to be kept in mind when handling laboratory specimens of individuals with suspected covid-19 status personal collecting specimen should use ppe personal transporting specimen should be trained in safe handling practices specimens for transport should be placed in leak proof specimen bags which can be called as the secondary containers which have a separate pocket for the specimen that can be sealed which is the plastic biohazard specimen bag with the patient's label on the specimen container that is the primary container document the patient's details including suspected covid-19 status on the laboratory request form notify the laboratory as soon as possible that the specimen is being transported